In Australia, more than 200,000 people are living with Hep C. That's pretty high, eh? Did you know it's hit our community as well? Around 16,000 of our mob have Hep C. Come on a journey with me and find out what this is all about. You heard about that thing called hepatitis. Well, it means an inflamed or sick liver. You get it from different sorts of viruses, drinking, taking drugs, and some chemicals that can make your liver sick. Here in Australia, there are a few different types of the hepatitis virus, like hepatitis A and hepatitis B. The easiest way to stop getting these viruses is by getting a shot or a vaccination to look after yourself, ask your doc if you've been vaccinated. We want to yarn about hepatitis C or the hep C virus. This infects your liver and makes your liver sick. Hep C is passed when blood from someone who already has hep C gets into the bloodstream of another person. The only way is blood to blood contact. In Australia, this happens when people share drug injecting equipment like needles, syringes, spoons, filters, water, swabs, and even tourniquets. For our mob to stay safe, it's a good idea to use new injecting equipment every time. People who have injected drugs only a few times are still at risk of hep C, especially if any injecting stuff was shared. Catching hep C is through blood contact, so you can get it if you get a tattoo or piercing when the equipment is not clean and is shared. It's not cool to use dirty stuff, so watch out for backyard or prison jobs and check out when you go into the shops that they are using sterile equipment. You can't get clean injecting, tattooing or body piercing equipment in prison. And because about 35% of people in there have hep C, using any of the stuff inside is a big risk. Some ways that are not so common are medical needle stick injuries, sharing razors, toothbrushes and other personal items that come into contact with blood. If you had a blood transfusion before 1990, because now all donated blood is checked out. A lot of people believe that Hep C can be passed on by touching, kissing, sharing plates or cutlery, using toilets or in the washing machine. This is gammon. It is not sexually transmitted except when blood is present. But hey, chuck on a condom anyway, because there are some nasty bugs out there. You can't just go to the doctor and get a shot to stop getting Hep C. They haven't invented one yet. The sneaky thing is, is if you get rid of your Hep C, naturally or through treatment, you can catch it again. So stay safe around blood. If you think you've had a chance of getting hep C, you can go and get a blood test from your doc. How are you going? Yeah. Yeah. How come you've come in today? What are you wanting to talk about? My ear. My oh, okay. Eye. Had a recent piercing. Yeah, we did, a, um, did the piercing at, at my house. My oh. friends came over, my cousins. Yeah, yeah. We don't encourage um, home piercing anymore because we know that um, viruses can get spread quite easily when there's um, blood around and people aren't sterilising equipment. So we always encourage people to find um, a practitioner, so a licensed tattooist or a licensed person that does piercing and things like that. And then we can make sure that they've got all the right sterilising equipment and things like that. And that's probably why I encourage you to get a test today because even though I'm not overly worried about you, um, we don't know for sure whether you've been exposed to anything unless we do these tests, yeah? yeah? Before you get tested for hepatitis C, the doctor, nurse or health worker should have a chat to you. And this is to find out whether you know what you're getting tested for and how the results of that test might affect you. And also we need to find out whether you're ready to get this test done today. This is what we call informed consent, and for informed consent must be gained before we do a test like this. During this chat, we, we should find out what you know about hepatitis C, how it might be affecting your health. We can find out whether you're worried or not, and if you do have some worries or concerns, we're here to support you. During this time, we can also find out what support you've got and maybe help you find some support, more support, whether that's with friends, families, or 
other health services. Results are talked through with you face to face and never over the phone. Let's go and see what getting a test looks like. Well, with hepatitis C, we have to do a few different tests. Initially, we do a, an antibody test, and um, an antibody test is we, where we look for the white blood cells that you produce against the virus to fight the virus off. So we would do an antibody test, and if that was positive, then we might do some. Then we would do further testing to see whether the virus is there. And the test that looks for the virus is called a PCR test, which is, you know, a modern complicated test, but the result tells us whether the virus is still there or not. Because many people actually clear the virus, and um, in that case, they would be PCR negative. But if someone's PCR positive, we know that the virus is still around, and then we might have a look at what the genotype is or what strain of the virus um, is present because that will tell us information about how we might treat the virus. When we talk about genotypes, we're talking about different strains of the hepatitis um, C virus. We might use an example is that there's there are dogs, and, but there are different um, types of dogs, like there's a Labrador or something like that. And so with hepatitis C, there's different types of hepatitis C that exist, and um, they are all treated differently. That's the most important thing that we need to know. All this waiting around for your test results can be tough. If you need to yarn about what's going on, you can talk with your health worker or your doctor. There's also the Hep C info line you can call.